Hello, everyone. This is the Free American Press with your host, Alexander Horat. And today we're having my mom on the show. Her name is Maria Horat. And we actually work together. She's the broker of Gold Country Properties. And I'm a realtor. And I actually started just working with her. Uh, we have a real estate company here in Northern California. And uh, just really appreciate you coming back on the show. Thank you, Alex. Yes, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about how ESGs, they're making these things called ESGs and how they're affecting real estate. So if you'd like to uh, start talking about that and some of the implications of this going on. Sure. So uh, real estate has been tra uh, traditionally a safe haven for uh, homeowners and investors. Uh, it, offer, it has offered security, stability, tax breaks, equity building, and hedge against inflation, return on investment for those who invest into real estate. Um, in the last few years, we have seen an unprecedented uh, housing bubble, uh, which has been the result of um, quantitative easing uh, practices by the Federal Reserve Bank and other monetary policies. And as both uh, inflation and interest rates have been on the rise, we are also seeing a shift um, in the global mindset towards uh, giving more value to ESG and sustainable development goals set by the United Nations. The impact on many sectors such as real estate cannot be ignored. So uh, what I would like to do is go over what ESGs are and some of the problems that uh, we're going to see or we're already seeing because of uh, ESGs. Okay. So what does ESG mean? In short, it means environmental social governance, that is corporate governance. Uh, and they use a set of factors. Companies are going to be using a set of factors to assess how well a company integrates sustainability development goals into their um, investments and policies. Uh, there's so the three major components are um, uh, envir environmental, social governance, those three things. And when I say corporate governance, then we're uh, talking about um, private uh, public partnerships that are, the government is gonna be making also with a lot of these investment companies. So they have metrics um, and there's not a, a benchmark or a set, um, a set of metrics that will be used in order to measure these ESGs, like, Everyone has their own. And so that's one of the problems. Um, they have been introducing every sector, real estate being one of them, because they said real estate accounts for one third of the global uh, CO2 emissions. So they said that uh, implementation into this sector is necessary in order to combat climate change. So what are the problems with ASCs? The first problem uh, is the distortion of capital resources allocation. So in a free market economy, borrowers, lenders, and investors exchange funds to finance projects uh, based on the highest return for investment that happens in a free market economy. It's not a perfect thing, but uh, over time, uh, this exchange uh, just results in a, a much more efficient economy. However, uh, the free market allocation uh, for capital resources is threatened by regulations and policies uh, that seek to implement environmental or social policy into the financial system framework, resulting in diminishing returns for investment and undermining growth and innovation. The second problem uh, is how banks, uh, banking institutions are gonna be in control. So there is something called stakeholder capitalism model which has been espoused by uh, Klaus Schwab from the World of Economic Forum and other growing lists of powerful um, economic political elites, such as Black Rock, Rock CEO Larry Fink and President of course, Joe Biden, which have recently committed to a global reset uh, of the prevailing school of economic thought aim to replace free market economics. Okay. So, since there's not a uniform approach to specific benchmarks, like I mentioned earlier, measurement or ratings, instead there are multiple overlapping systems, um, each sponsor uh, international governmental organization is gonna have some financial 
institution have the power to implement their own metrics, which is going to ultimately lead to abuse by financial regulators who are not tasked by Congress or voted in by uh, the, uh, the voters to implement environmental um, and social policy and lack the necessary expertise to create any policy for that matter. So we're going to see how banks, banking institutions are basically going to have uh, way more power than they already have uh, right. on shaping uh, society. Another thing I wanted to bring out, uh, bring up too, that we can take a look at the United States government sponsored enterprise and everybody who went through the 2008 housing crash will know who I'm talking about is Fannie Mae. Uh, they largely contributed to the 2008 housing crisis, along with Freddie Mac, which lost a combined $47 billion in the single uh, family mortgage business. Despite the mon monumental failures uh, and role of the, in the uh, previous uh, housing collapse of the 2008, Government sponsor Fannie Mae is cur currently offering a suite of green home financing alternatives for the real estate market. So we'll see how this next, uh, you know, uh, bubble burst is going to shape out with uh, all of these uh, green financial alternatives that Fannie Mae has to offer. The other problem with the ESGs is how the large corporations, uh, large corporate investors like BlackRock, are benefiting at the expense of others. Corporations such as Black Rocks, which is the largest private asset manager, has fully attained the benefits of ESG's investment. They are um, the, one of the top five uh, share, shareholders that vest the majority of uh, majority of the shares uh, in ESGs and important global companies, and is perfectly situated to influence ESG decisions via their, you know, the block, uh, voting blocks that they hold. Um, so therefore, not just banks, but large corporations such as BlackRock have, are going to have a huge role in reshaping society as a whole. The yeah. most obvious problem is how uh, ESGs will lead government to abuse power. Just a few days ago, the uh, EU made an astonishment announcement that it plans to impose carbon uh, carbon taxes on individuals, carbon taxes, this just happened on December 23rd. Wow. So they're planning to impose, impose carbon taxes on individuals. Uh, this just came as people are struggling to keep their houses warm because of the lack of fuel. Just the idea of having to pay taxes on every time you turn on the heater or every time you use your fireplace is unthinkable. And it won't take long for that to be implemented here in the U.S., Back in January of last year, 2022, uh, Treasury Secretary uh, Janet Yellen made the announcement that we should start a climate hub with the Department of Treasury, with the Department of Treasury to coordinate a wide, wide ranging efforts to fight climate change through economic and tax policies. So what is that saying? Um, other draconian measures, of course, we've seen uh, how uh, carbon emissions are going full speed ahead uh, in, in Europe, in the Netherlands in particular. Uh, for example, countless farms are um, currently being permanently shut down all over Europe. And uh, in the Netherlands alone, thousands of farmers are facing food uh, you know, shortages because they are being forced uh, to you know, sell their farms whether they like it or not. Uh, these ESG, ESG regulators also uh, have resulted, regulations have resulted in a total catastrophe in Sri Lanka, as we've seen, with um, how the organic farming, pra agricultural practices have um, just basically simulated uh, the agriculture sector. What Sri Lanka used to be actually considered a middle income. They have just earned the middle income um, status, and now they are. Uh, poverty level again, because right. largely ESG. So, I don't know what your thoughts are about well, all these problems, but these are just a few that I, ident I identify. Well, some of my thoughts on the problem is, is that this is really going to hurt people who oh, have very much money. 
I think one of the scary things is that it's basically going to be an extra tax on your property. Like if you're not, if you don't have the new code, like if you don't have a fireplace or you don't live up to their ESG emission codes or whatever for your property, then they're going to increase your taxes or your insurance costs to drive up prices until you fix the problem that they dictate to you. And I really think it's going to be adv adversely affecting the small little people in relation to the big corporations and the bankers who are going to be in control of these ESGs. And the thing that scares me is that there's no set standards, so they can just basically make whatever baloney they want uh, to harm individuals and get more money from them while they have really bad uh, things that ha are really bad for the environment, but they're in relation with big corporations and stuff. They're not going to be charged anything more. So I'm going to share the screen to show you uh, everyone that's going on with insurance companies. So hurricanes are playing havoc with Florida's property insurance markets. Floridians are worried about rising homeowners insurance premiums, which are three times the national average. So this is pretty big right here because the governor, uh, Ron DeSantis, there's a big ESG debate going on in Florida, how climate policy could avoid cultural war. So basically... Ron DeSantis doesn't want this ESG because it's increasing insurance costs for people in Florida. And the same thing is happening in uh, California as well uh, with uh, fire insurance costs and everything else with ESGs. If ESGs go up, then that's going to increase the insurance costs for people's property. So insurance companies, ESG investing in real estate. So this is going to increase insurance bills on us because they say there's ESG hazards and everything else in, re in relation to that. So this is pretty crazy that this is going on. It's basically just a way to tax us more. I think if you are going to build houses in the near future, you should build houses now instead of waiting for all these new regulations to come out in California. Uh, that's kind of my thought. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, you brought up a good point about the insurance companies. Uh, we're seeing, of course, astronomical insurance premiums here, in, uh, especially in Northern California, but the whole, the whole state in general because of the fires. And so the way there is going to come down is that they're just going to say, well, if your home hasn't been upgraded to, uh, you know, if your home is not um, greener, you know, that you don't make all these upgrades that they want you to do to make it greener, uh, you're going to have to pay a higher insurance premium, or we might even get rid of uh, your insurance policy. Uh, so either way you, you look at it, the, the average person is going to be spending way more unless there is some other subsidy that comes into place, which is also either way is the average person who's going to be holding the bag because it's, subsidies are taxed, you know, backed by taxes, uh, property taxes and, you know, people's taxes. So it's going to be, uh, you know, a bad situation for everyone. And, and, and if they take, uh, if they get rid of your insurance, that's going to make it so they can just kick you out of your house because if you have a mortgage, you need to have their insurance. Exactly. Um, if you have a mortgage, problem. you have to have insurance. Yeah. Right. So it's not a problem that's just happening here in California. It's happening in Florida too. So it's a good thing that their governor there is, you know, standing up and saying, we're not going to have this in our state because that's just going to just make it worse for everyone. It's going to make it un unaffordable. So especially if you're in California, you're a builder. It's time to build now because it's just, it seems like every year the regulations get worse and worse and it's harder to build houses here in California. Well, just, just here in Tuolumne County, they just passed, you know, the climate action plan. Yeah. And uh, part of the work plan states that if a, a new development is going to take place, that there will be some uh, some very complicated formulas, some ESG metrics that they have. They have to meet so many ESGs, uh, whatever they call it, credits, I don't know, in order to for that project to be approved. So the average builder is going to be really, really costly uh, to be able to build anything. So it's going to just be the the corporate investors, uh, the, the corporate builders, the black no, ones. Wow. You know, they're going to be go and then they're going to have a monopoly on the housing market, which they already have a slight monopoly on already. So that's just going to make a problem worse with the housing market here in California. 
uh, even though we're actually having a net population decrease in the state. So the housing problem, you think, would start going away because our population's declining. But no, it won't because they have so many regulations that it'll never go away. It'll continue to get worse as the regulations get worse. So even though our population's declining, we're still going to see yeah. people on the streets. And it's going to be, yeah, exactly. Fuel the home situation uh, and the housing uh, crisis situation. And they're just going to bring about more of the subsidized housing, which is, uh, at the end of the day, income redistribution. You know, uh, people's money, uh, taxes is just going to go to fund uh, all the subsidized housing that are green. And so, and that's so they can control. I mean, people are not going to be able to afford build building a home or keeping a home or even renting a home from someone, the average person. And that's so they can control the people, too, because you're on the government dole subsidized housing uh, when before you owned your own house, but they took it away from you and gave you some low income housing. So it's basically the income redistribution, stealing your stuff and giving it to themselves. Uh, yeah, because that's all it's about. Unfortunately, uh, the banking system, you know, has been also um, part of this whole scam. That, and we're seeing it even worse now. So we just need will, to be aware. Uh, this will definitely affect the real estate market in California. Yeah, and it's going to affect the real estate market everywhere, but especially in California when we have a governor that is, you know, full into, into this uh Green agenda. He just passed forty regulations. I think it was last September, having to do with climate change. That's going to impact real estate. And it's going to impact our daily lives. So we're going to supposed to reach a certain goal, a hundred percent. You know, uh, no carbon uh, dioxide emissions by a certain day. That's unattainable. Yeah, well, As it is right now, current grid system doesn't even support what we have that along in a few years. So I, how are we going to get from point A to point B unless there is some kind of other technologies that we haven't been told that, that is going to pop up all of a sudden, but that's not Well, really I think the way they're going to get to is what they're doing already. California's population is declining due to their terrible policies. So once their population's near zero or zero, then they're going to meet their goals, won't they? Uh, so... Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you'd like yeah. to say about ESGs or anything in relation to that? Or, you know, I think there's a uh, uh, they're saying that there's going to be a market on this whole carbon credits uh, thing that if you don't emit, if you have carbon credits and you can sell them, it's a complicated. It's a complicated thing because they want it to be complicated. It's part of this ESG thing, but the carbon credit situation is something that we also need to talk about in another video. Those are problems. How that's going to play to these, uh, basically, you know, if, if a company uh, emits too much carbon dioxide, then they have to, you know, uh, or if it doesn't emit enough, you can sell your carbon credits to another company. I mean, it's a scam all the way around. Which is well, it, it is a scam because why can you sell it to another company in the first place if exactly. they're actually making their carbon loss? Exactly. Yeah. It's definitely all a scam and it needs to be exposed and people need to know what's coming down the pipe uh, so they yeah. can be better prepare. They can make the real estate decisions if they own a home, if they need to move out of state or if they need to pay off some debt so that they can own their home. I mean, you never really ultimately own your home because you have to pay taxes on it, right? So even if it's free and clear, you still got to pay taxes on it. So um and of course that can change. So it depends right, on right. the state you're in. So, but you know, the less debt you have, the more, uh, the better you'll be as, as, as it is now. I agree. So that's, if you have any questions on real estate, of course, if you are planning on selling or uh, moving out of state or buying, uh, feel free to give us a call. We're happy to help you and, and answer any questions that you might have as well. Yep, if you're thinking about buying or selling real estate in California, you can definitely contact us with Gold Country Property so uh, you can make the move and be better positioned uh, for yourself and your family. And I would just like to thank you again, Mom, for being on the show. And uh, just like to thank everyone for watching this video. And I hope uh, you can take something away from this. And I uh, hope you all have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Uh, God thank bless. you, Alex. Bye. Bye.